In this video, I have 10 tips that are going to help you to practice your English speaking skills on your own. My name is Amy from realenglishconversations.com and in this video, I am going to be joined with Greg from Online English Academy or Ola English with Greg is his channel. I'll have the link to subscribe down below. So let's get started with your tip, Greg. What do you have for us? Hello everybody, my name's Greg from Online Language Academy and thank you Amy for having me on your channel today. My first activity is to find photos or pictures around your house and talk about them, describe them. This could be a photo on the wall, a family photo, some art, um, the cover of a book. It doesn't matter, but just look around the house, find a picture, and ask yourself the five W's. Who, what, where, when, why. So describe who is in the picture, what they are doing, when the photo was, where the people were, and why they were doing what they were doing. Remember the five W's, who, what, where, when, why. If you answer all of those questions, it gives you great practice speaking about a big variety of topics. And if you don't know the answers, it doesn't matter. Just invent answers. Make up a story. It doesn't matter. The only important thing is that you are using your English brain. You are constantly thinking and using real life English vocabulary. And when you want to speak English in real life, it will become more natural for you and you will be able to do it without thinking and translating in your head so much because of all the practice that you've done by yourself at home. That's a great activity. I like it, Greg. Okay, for my activity, we're going to be using a TV series that you are enjoying right now, and we're going to talk about the latest episode. If you're a reader, then you might want to talk about the last chapter of the book that you're reading. The cool thing about this activity is that it doesn't really matter if the book is in English or not, but the ideas are in your head and we need to practice explaining what happened. Don't worry if it seems a little bit hard at first, you're probably just lacking some vocabulary. But luckily, because you're practicing on your own, you're able to stop at any time and look up a word that you might be missing. The best part is that you can put that word into action immediately. So go ahead and try that activity. What do you have next for us, Greg? Well, Amy, this next one is my favorite and it is singing along to your favorite English songs. Now, this might be something that you already do. And if it is, great. But I want you to make a couple of changes to what you do. So first, I want you to understand the vocabulary so that you know what you are singing. Secondly, I want you to sing all the words, not just the most repeated two or three words of the song, but all the words. When you do this, you will think, wow, how is it possible for the singer to sing five words in just bum bum bum, three beats. Well, it is possible and that is what you need to focus on. You need to really listen to the singer and copy how they make five words fit into three beats. Focus on how they link words together, how they join two words into a shorter space of time and then imitate it. If you imitate this, then when you're speaking English and use the same joining methods to connect words together, you will speak with a much more native pronunciation. And also, you will be able to sing your favorite songs in English really well. I've taught hundreds, 
probably thousands of students and some of the ones with the best, most native pronunciation are the ones who learned English, not from going to England, not from having classes every day, but ones who actually learned English by listening to music. So do this. It's cool to be able to sing your favorite songs in English. Your pronunciation and accent in English is gonna be great. And who knows, you could be the next king or queen of karaoke. What do you think, Amy? Singing to your favorite songs. That's one of my favorite activities as well. So I'm going to give you a pronunciation tip today and an activity that is a little bit challenging, but it's extremely helpful if you want to improve your intonation and rhythm in English and to try to sound more like a native speaker to develop a good accent. The tip is called shadowing, okay? And shadowing is an activity where you listen to the audio through some headphones so it's super clear and at the same time you read what is being said and then after you've listened a couple of times you try to repeat the same thing in the same way. Now here's the trick. You need to be listening to the audio at the same time that you're trying to speak. And the reason why this is important is because you're going to be hearing the audio and you're going to be hearing your own voice at the same time, which will help you to identify any differences that you have. When you hear something is different, you can go back and listen carefully to how it's being said. Try your best to repeat the sounds. If you feel like the rhythm is off, just listen to the rhythm of the speaker and try to repeat it in the same way at the same time. Be sure to use an audio that's not too difficult, something that's not too fast and that the person speaks clearly. This is really important. If you need to slow down the audio, that's okay too. This is a pronunciation activity, not a speaking quickly challenge. Okay, Greg, what do you have for us next? Yes, the shadowing technique is a really cool technique. Thank you for that, Amy. Next, I have something that you can do from home alone. I used to do it on the street alone. And what it is, is to do a role play with yourself of real life situations. So to give you an example, I used to do this when I was living in France or preparing to go to live in France. I was in the street, I walked past the post office and I thought, okay, let's have a little role play in the post office. So in my mind, I used to pretend that I wanted to buy some stamps or I wanted to apply for a passport. I remember also walking past a mobile phone shop and had a little role play in my head of buying a mobile phone. It's a great way to just find new vocabulary that you will need in real life situations. And if you don't know the word, just get out your phone and have a quick look in an online dictionary. And then you can use it in your little role play with yourself. So some more ideas are buying a coffee, uh, buying a train ticket, complaining about bad food at a restaurant, giving directions to someone in the street, offering to help someone cross the road. It could be anything. And you can do this, as I said, in the street or at home alone. Just by looking around the house for inspiration, watching things on TV might also give you inspiration. The most important thing is that you are practicing English in real life situations so that when you want to use it in real life, you can speak more quickly and more confidently. So those were five of the 10 tips. And if you wanna get access to the other five, listen carefully. The first thing that you need to do is to give a thumbs up to this video if you heard something new or something that you'd like to try. 
Leave me a comment below to tell me which idea was your favorite and which one you're going to try. And lastly, be sure to subscribe to our channel, realenglishconversations.com. And then after, you need to head over to this video right here to see Greg and I again with the other five tips, which are even better than these ones. So go over there right now, subscribe to Greg's channel while you're there, and I'll see you in that video.